It's Saturday, November 27, 2010, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. To start off, I hope everyone had a pleasant Thanksgiving if you do celebrate that holiday. But let's jump right into the Linux news, because there was quite a bit of it this week. Well, it's finally happened. We have the world's first Linux Jedi. YouTube user Yan Kayan, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, so I'll have links in the source code below, has made some videos showing himself doing various and sundry things with the Kinect device and the Open Kinect drivers. One of these things involves taking a wooden stick, placing it in his desk chair, and then running some software on his Ubuntu system that works with the Kinect drivers to make it look as if he's holding a lightsaber. In addition, he's taught the Kinect how to recognize simple objects by telling it what the object is, and later looking at it again, it can recognize the object. He's also been working with an NES emulator to use the Kinect as a motion controller for that. So you can actually play as Mario in the original Super Mario Bros. game. Very cool. Now quite possibly the biggest news of this week, Novell was purchased by a company called Attachmate. Now according to everything I've read, it shouldn't have any real impact on SUSE Linux Enterprise users or OpenSUSE, the community itself. It's primarily just putting most of Novell's projects in an umbrella under Attachmate. However, in addition to that, about 822 patents were sold directly to Microsoft for about $450 million cash. A lot of people are really concerned as to what those patents were, but Novell assures us that none of them were their Unix-related patents, so we should still be in the clear for a little while now. But just to reiterate, everything should be business as usual in every SUSE environment for the foreseeable future, until Attachmate decides they want to do something with it. In some other relatively big news, it was rumored that Ubuntu was going to be moving to a rolling release cycle in the near future. This comes from Mark Shuttleworth making an offhand comment about the idea of being able to get the most up-to-date software on a day-to-day -day basis because we are in an ever-rolling and ever-constantly changing world. However, Ubuntu's engineering director Rick Spencer has updated his blog by saying that there will not be a rolling release model, but they're planning on adding some things to the software center that will allow you to get the latest and greatest software while having that six-month release cycle at the same time. So they will make it a little bit easier in the future to do daily builds of certain pieces of software, but not necessarily the entire OS. Like I said, you will still have that six-month release cycle of the April and October releases. In other relatively big and somewhat awesome news, Mozilla has announced they're going to have their own app store. Now there's a part of me that says, another app store, I'm going to have to buy apps all over again. There's a second part of me that says, these are probably all going to be web apps that are not really anything more than bookmarks. But there's a third part of me that says, you know, Mozilla's available on a lot of smartphones, it's available on every Linux distribution practically, it's available on other platforms it might be the best way to go, something that is completely cross-platform rather than tying yourself to one type of device or one type of operating system. As far as what they're planning to offer, it sounds like primarily web applications, kind of like the Chrome Web Store is going to be. So it's going to be a bit of a competition between the Chrome Web Store and the Mozilla, Firefox, whatever web store. What do you guys think about it? Another web store? Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? What would you like to see in it? Let me know in the comments below. In some other news that's kind of interesting to me at this point, KDE 4.6 Beta 1 is now available. I know, I know, I'm a GNOME user by default. You see there is a GNOME desktop in the background behind me that's Arch Linux running GNOME. I'm not actually using it this week. Because I'm doing a challenge to myself to use KDE 100%, I will be using this to edit the video, but I won't be doing it for anything else this week. I'm using my laptop with Arch Linux and KDE 4.5.3. So it's interesting to see that KDE 4.6 is well on the way. So let's talk about what's going to be new with it. According to the release notes, KWIN has been majorly optimized, which is great because one of the problems that I've had with KDE so far is it's felt kind of sluggish for me. In addition, some significant changes are being added to Dolphin, such as a Git plugin, which will make it a little bit easier when they move all of the KDE source over to Git for the developers to get it. They've also added columns in the file browser now, and the ability to search within files even when the file indexer is turned off. And quite possibly the biggest change coming in 4.6 is they're moving away from HAL, something that GNOME has done several releases ago. They're moving more toward UDEV and things of that nature. In addition, it's been announced that KDE is going to be a part of the next Google Code In. If you're not familiar, Google Code In is kind of like Google Summer of Code, but it's geared toward pre-university students to try to get younger and younger people involved in the open source development process. So if you are younger than college age and you're interested in helping to contribute to the KDE project, definitely go check out the Google Code In project. You might be able to put some projects out there and maybe make a little money off of them. Some other really big and interesting news to me this week is PC Linux OS has announced they are on their way to having a 64-bit edition. 
I realize PC Linux has been out for a while now, and there have been a lot of rumors about a 64-bit edition in the works, but Techstar, the creator of it, the guy who's behind everything, has said he's got a thousand packages done toward it, just another 12,600 more to go or so. But it is very cool to see PC Linux 64-bit coming. And let's wrap things up with a little bit of tablet news. The details have finally come out on the Asus E-Tab that's been rumored for so long. Turns out it's not entirely going to be a tablet. It's going to be an 8 inch 768 by 1024 device, meaning it's going to be portrait. It's going to be grayscale only with a Wacom digitizer built into it and a little stylus so you can do all of your drawing things on it. Other than that, the specs are pretty standard. It's got Wi-Fi, 4 gigs of built-in storage, a 2 megapixel camera, and if I hadn't mentioned it, it's called the Asus E-Note. I'm not entirely sold on that. It doesn't have any pricing available at the moment, but what do you think about it? A grayscale device with a digitizer input? I don't know, it seems kind of 1990s-ish. Maybe I'm mistaken. And to wrap things up, let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy Tab. With the holiday season just beginning, Samsung has claimed they've sold over 600,000 Galaxy Tabs since release, and they're looking to sell over a total of a million before the holiday season closes this year. After looking at all the specs, I'm still not convinced that the Galaxy Tab is the way to go. It is an excellent device, but for the price, uh, it's not quite for me. What do you think about it though? Would you buy a Galaxy Tab? If they'd lower the price, I'd definitely consider it, but $400 plus a two-year contract? Not for me. $600 unsubsidized? No, thank you. But that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry again for this being kind of late. I was out of town for Thanksgiving. I hope you had a great week. I hope you had a great weekend, and I will see you in a few days.